join us for another episode of the game cast i am one of your hosts kenny and with me is tess hello everybody and uh, my nickname is also shea kool-aid's winning outfit from rupaul's drag race all stars oh yeah awesome <laughs> um we have a cool episode for you today um and that cool i mean informative not necessarily cool like happening although i think we are hip i, I think we are uh a we little have- bit we have a chemistry going, you know, uh, as blurs, as you will. And I think that our last few uh, shows have been really in- uh, entertaining. I've been talking to people, um, a.k.a. the small people in my circle and my wife. And <laughs> they all are having a good time. Uh, they enjoyed it, especially the episode about the black uh, TV shows. Uh, really mm. like that. Really brought up some memories and... Um, I know a lot of them went to go stream a lot of stuff that we talked about. So kudos That's to awesome. us in that regard. Um, yeah. But yeah, before we get into the things that we're going to talk about, we want to just hit a little bit of what happened this past week. Not a whole lot. Uh, Microsoft showed off some games for their upcoming console. It didn't blow anybody away, per se. Um, I think the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway from Microsoft was their accessibility. Uh, via the Game Pass, which is, uh, I think, roughly 14 a month or something along those lines, um, you get a ton of games, including majority of their launch titles, if not all of them. I think all of the ones that they showed, you kind of get. And for the people who don't know what Game Pass is, it is a it's basically a Netflix for video games on the Xbox. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so you get all of their exclusive games, like Halo Infinite, um, on launch day and you can play it for as long as you want as long as you're you know you're paying monthly and the idea is that because it's the game pass is on the xbox one it's on pc it's on the new console you are going to be able to play these games regardless um if you upgrade or not and if you have the they're going to be uh rolling out or the rumor is they're going to be rolling out the x cloud to the game pass which means you'll be able to play these games on your phone your tablets um and because it's all running through the cloud. And that's really awesome because as cool as the PlayStation exclusives were when they showed their show, um, you have to pay full price for those. That's And the, mm-hmm. the idea is that the price is going to go up this year. So 70 bucks for these games. And that's, you know, after you buy the system, you have to, you know, purchase those games. Whereas the Xbox, yeah. if you upgrade, um, you still can use the old controllers that you have from your Xbox One. And you get all these games. And, you know, for however... And I'm pretty sure they're going to bundle it with the console, the Game Pass, when it comes out. So, yeah. You're going to be able to play. And that that makes it extremely accessible to people in different uh, ballparks when it comes to money, right? Like, if you can't afford the new system, get the Game Pass. You can still play a lot of their games that are going to be coming out. So, again, I'm still on the fence about who I'm going to be purchasing or which system I'm going to be purchasing first. But... I think Xbox did a solid job in letting people know that, hey, if you if you can afford, you know, Netflix with however many screens, you can afford to play a ton of games, which for someone who is looking for a rental service that is not Gamefly, because no, um, this, that would be <laughs> awesome. Now, nah, Gamefly is, is Gamefly is solid. The thing is, it's really hard to get new games. Old games, you're, you're straight, but. But new games, right. it, because they only get so many and everybody wants them, it's, it's kind of difficult. Yeah. Whereas, And then it's also through the mail. And who wants to be handling mail right now? So, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know what I mean? Um, and we're not going to talk about the red, uh, red box. Um, beyond that, um, <laughs> I... <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't push. I was like, nope, we're not. No, nah, we're, we're just not. Uh, beyond that, uh, on a personal <laughs> note, I watched anime because, yes, and I... Uh, caught up on One Piece, which is getting pretty good. Oh, wow. I, yep. Um, I, me and my friend were talking about how it was impossible for us to watch One Piece before we could, like, binge watch it. Watching it mm. e- episode, which is, I'm finding out now, now that I'm at the end of the episodes, um, I can't wait for the next week. There, there's so little amount of story in each episode. And the story is, Mm -hmm. the episodes are, I mean, the the series is so freaking long. I mean, we're in the 900 episodes that it it would be hard to sit there every week and wait, you know? 
Um, so while One Piece is, you know, kind of storing up content, I slide over to Black Clover, um, or I go over to Baruto, or I, I move around to kind of build mm-hmm. up. But uh, what I've been watching has been pretty inter- uh, entertaining, and especially Black Clover with um, some of their fillers, which are hilarious. I never thought I would like fillers, uh, aside from Naruto. <laughs> I'm telling you, aside from Naruto, where they give you like a little bit of, you know, extra backstory that's not in the the manga, um, uh-huh. it's the only filler I want to watch. Like Black Clover is doing a really good job because they they in, uh, develop the characters a little bit more, but they uh-huh. get into really funny things. Like for instance, <laughs> this one character has a crush. And, and side note, what is with this unbridled love stuff of anime? All of a sudden, like everybody uh-huh. has to be in a love triangle it's it's korean drama all over anyways yes um, so one character likes another character and this person accidentally touches them and instead of like being like oh gosh you know they they touch me let me you know let me try not to blush she literally runs out and jumps out of the window it was the funniest mm-hmm. thing i had mm-hmm. seen it was great um and she was fine she's a warrior so it was you know it's, it's just seeing her let her guard down and then like have to dive out a window because she's embarrassed is yeah yes. it, was, it was good stuff um <laughs> so that's that's been uh my week on a personal note um aside from some ups and downs with trying to get our riding lawnmower working um i spilled <laughs> gasoline on myself um <laughs> And I, I went and had to bathe, and I still smell like gas. I thought, you know, yeah. if I stay out in the sun, I would catch flame. And 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 that's a possibility. I just wasn't, you know, because it was. It's been hot, right? It's been hot. So, uh, yeah, I did get it working, um, and we were able to cut most of the the backyard with it. There were some areas that I couldn't get with it, so I had to use the push more. Um, and that's been it. That's been most of my time has been mundane stuff. I did do a review. I did do a review, um, the f- first one I've done in a while, um, gaming-wise, uh, Carry uh-huh. On. It's on our website, unitedfrontgaming.com. Solid uh-huh. game, solid game. It's a horror-based game, but it's reverse horror. You actually play as the monster uh, tearing people up. Um, oh, and it's interesting. Yep, it's, it's puzzle-laden, so like you, you have to solve puzzles to kind of get around, but you play as like this amphibious creature with like all these tentacles and something straight out of anime and you're just pulling people and 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 biting people but you have to figure out how to get out of these uh this laboratory or this underground facility and uh yeah pretty solid it's um i'm not gonna tell you the score because you need to go read it but it's (laughs) it's good um and so this week for you you've been you know you've been working uh, at, a, yeah. at a pharmacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been working at a pharmacy and my feet hurt. I mean, dang. Like, <laughs> you know, these mats on the floor that make it nicer. I mean, like, my point is that it's not like hard vinyl floor that you find in like grocery stores and stuff. And, you know, no, it's they have like those gym mats. You know, like if you have a home gym right. and you put those mats, yeah, they have those connecting mats at the floor, and then they put a mat on top of the mat, like the places where you stand, so it shouldn't even be better. Mats on mats on mats. I've been there for like eight days, and my feet are back to having plantar fasciitis. I'm like, I haven't had plantar fasciitis for like five years, and I got it like after two days? What nonsense is this? This is really making me rethink this whole being employed thing. But (laughs) there's that, and then there's also the fact that, you know, maybe this for me, I almost killed some people. Like, I put the wrong medicine in the wrong bottle. Oh, God. Like, yeah, maybe I'm not so good. By the way, it didn't happen. And none of y'all know where, where I work anyway, so. <laughs> 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 no, I really did. Like, I was putting some stuff away, and then I accidentally put something in the wrong bottle. I was like, oh, no. And then I, I fixed the error. Because I, I realized it immediately. It wasn't like, it wasn't like I was like, oh, done. Made a mistake. Here, go buy, go about my life. No, I caught it immediately because I saw myself do it. And I was right. like, oh, hey, I need to fix this. And so. you can't, when you see yourself do it, I mean, you just, you got to stop. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you know, otherwise they don't hire people who can't check themselves. I mean, like I literally saw the mistake that I made. Like I had my hand on the wrong thing and I, I was doing it too quickly because somebody was rushing me and I did it too quickly. And I was like, oh, I made a mistake. And luckily, the pharmacist is right there. He's like, oh, that's an easy fix. Don't worry. We can fix that. 
Nice. Nobody even knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I even labeled the bottles and said, hey, anybody who dispenses this, you know, make sure you just double check, even though I already double check. Yes, triple so, check. Triple check. It'll, it'll now be quadruple checked. Yes, because we don't need anyone to, to have any type of issue because they have the wrong medication. Hello. I'm like, I'm not going to be responsible for that. Mm -mm. You don't no. know me. No. <laughs> I'm a ghost. <laughs> like, I'm not there. <laughs> so yeah, I've been doing some of that. And yeah, I'm definitely rethinking um, that life. I clearly need to go back to this life where you don't have to be on your feet all day and get plantar fasciitis. It's like, hey, you can be unemployed and not make any money, which is terrible. Or you can be employed, barely make any money because, you know, places are hiring for like $2 right now. And... <laughs> And then you can stand on your feet all day and you're like, hmm, now I need to pay a doctor to work on my plantar fasciitis again. I gotta figure this out. Yeah, man. It's, you know, it's, it, and the, some, a part of it is the fact that we've been kind of sedentary with being in the home all the time. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, and, you know, obviously the, the few of you who work out and like run every day, we're not talking about you. We're, we're talking no. about, we're talking about us. Okay. I, I totally, I had a physical trainer. I had this whole, uh, I was going to go see a nutritionist. I had all this stuff lined up. I was, I was losing weight actually. And mm -hmm. then 2019, uh, the end of 2019 was very rough for our family. And then yeah, after definitely. that was, uh, you know, Corona and I couldn't go see a nutrition nutritionist. Obviously I couldn't partner with my personal trainer at the gym anymore. And right. I, I got quarantine body. And so now mm -hmm. it's actually diff. Like I was mad when I was done cutting and mind you, I cut some of it on a riding lawnmower and some mm -hmm. of it with a push lawnmower. And I was mad tired. I felt like I gotten jumped. Like someone that robbed me from my shoes and just left me well, in the middle of a field. Yes. It, it, it just, I, I, it's like I was baking while I was doing it and my back hurt and my. my... And you were on fire. You had gasoline on your body. Yes. And, and gas. So I was nauseous and like, yeah. So I, I need, I'm trying to figure out a way to like get back into, into shape and, and whatnot. And it's been difficult. It's been difficult. Yeah. For, and some of it we're going to talk about tonight in terms of you know, things being difficult right now. Exactly. Um, speaking well, of which. It's definitely difficult because you can't use your watches anymore. My Garmin is now jailbroken. Well, not jailbroken, but it's a brick because Garmin got hacked. Yeah. You know what? That's going around because Twitter got hacked as well. And yep. a lot of the blue, none of the blue checks could actually say anything on Twitter for a while um, last week. And, uh, come to find out it was a huge thing and Twitter had to shut stuff down and get it fixed. And there was, there was people that were getting onto these, uh, you know, accounts and trying to sell things as a famous person. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was Bitcoin. Yeah. Like, I guess the hackers have time. They have time today. So they sure did have time. They have nothing to do. They're all quarantined. They're inside. You know, hackers love hacking. Like all for hacking for them. is just the joy of hacking. They're not even like really about like, like the damage they just love doing it because like oh my god i did this and then, and then you get some money for it but yeah <laughs> barack obama selling bitcoin what? yeah like uh mm, sir no uh no i know times are rough but did you, your wife is about to put out a book fam like it's not it's not like, that not that time yeah you're getting a whole show like a whole network like <laughs> fam look that's a whole nother podcast um <laughs> So t tonight we want to talk about, uh, you know, the difficulties that have come, have arisen due to 2020 being a dumpster fire. Um, yeah. and you know, a lot of it stems from, I mean, for it, depending on, you know, who you are, like a lot of it for me stems from the idea that I can't do things that I normally could do. And because I, I work from home previous to all mm -hmm. of this stuff. Yeah. And homeschooling and all that other good stuff. But I always had an out in the sense that like after, for instance, when everything was fine, um, I would do homeschooling, then I would work and, you know, be around the kids, whatever, make sure they were fed and, and alive and, you know, all that good stuff. And then I would take them to, let's see, I think it was on Tuesdays, I would take them to dance practice. So they had ballet and tap. And after that, I would tag my wife as she was getting home from work, tag, 
and then I would go to the movies. Mm -hmm. We actually put it into the budget for me to go see a film. Uh, one mm -hmm. of my favorite things to do is actually go to the theater. And so that was, I, I was able to unwind. I was able to like clear my head and yeah. I, I wasn't lonely. I was around people, but I didn't have to talk to them. So my introvert self was able to deal. And because yeah. I was away from my family, um, you know, at least two hours, uh, yeah. I got home. I had more energy and I can, I can go to the, you know, I can start the next day. And mm -hmm. with it being, you know, a constant, uh, you know, everyone's home constantly now, my anxiety and, and, you know, for people who don't know, being an introvert doesn't mean you don't want to be around people. It just means that it takes energy to be around people. And so yeah. you need to get that energy back in order to function. And it's harder to do that now because you're, you know, you're always around. Um, and, yeah. that, and, and it's not, not, a, you know, necessarily a bad way, but it's just like having the time to be, to, to not be on, especially as a parent, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm always on in terms of like, what are my kids doing? What are they watching? You know, are they safe when they play in the backyard? Like, who's that dude mm -hmm. over there? You know, stuff like that. Who and is that dude over there? I don't know, but you know, uh, hey, 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 you don't want no smoke, fam. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? And like, it, it, it kind of causes it makes it so that it's harder to deal with other things. And so that's, so that's just that for, you know, personally, and I don't know other people, you know, how they're dealing. I know like people, there's, the, there's the joke that like, you know, the, the your wives and husbands are at it and the, the children are pissing them off and they don't want them to go mm -hmm. back to school. And I get that. I've never had that for me. Right. It's, it's been, it's been lately. It's been like trying to function with, the current state of the world and not having time to, I guess, kind of like contemplate or just have a mental break because you're always yeah. doing something. And yeah, it's been, it's been rough. It's been rough. And so a lot of people are, are finding ways to deal or not. Or not. Um, and it's, it's, it's a been it's, it's affecting them in negative ways. And, um, yeah, just across the board, it's been rough. And one of the yeah. one of the things is like just like the news, right? Um, and no one watches the news uh, <laughs> any, anymore. But we we we're all on Twitter, we're on social media, we're on mm -hmm. Facebook. The news hits, and there's something like you know drastic, like you know I don't know, uh, murder hornets, and then aliens, and then all yeah. sorts of stuff. Um, they're canceling anime. What? Like you know all sorts of craziness. Not and okay with that. Not at all. And hearing it. And not having a, a means of letting things out, speaking to people, you can't mm -hmm. hug people who are going through the the things that they're growing going through because of Corona. Mm -hmm. um, it gets taxing. It, it's it's a it's a weight. It's a it's a a heavy thing. Um, yeah. And we kind of want to talk about it. We want to yeah. talk about your mental state. Um, I know we did a, a episode about anxiety mm -hmm. before, but we kind of mm -hmm. wanted to retouch on it because of recent yeah. things in the news with people taking their lives. And yeah. we kind of wanted to, to, you know, have a chat, have a chat, yeah. see how people going out, you know, how people are doing out there and offer our thoughts, um, mm -hmm. sharing some stuff, personal, personal stuff, because right. it's good to share and it's good to let people know that it's okay to talk to, to others about it. But then yeah. also offer our thoughts on ways that you can kind of deal. Exactly. You know? I know that I really wanted to do this topic because I lost a friend recently. Um, we, we, me and him, we actually aren't like close. We, we haven't, we don't really talk a lot, you know, like we don't pick up the phone. We really just kept up through Instagram actually. But it's somebody that I knew from teenage years. Like we worked at the same place for like three years and went to homecoming together like we're friends and when i found out that he took his own life it really broke me like honestly i was not okay for several days and i wanted to do this topic because i don't know what happened you know i don't know what he was going through and it really hurt me to realize that somebody who i consider a friend is no longer on this earth and me being unaware to what his struggle or pain was and i also in reflected inside because 
if anything of what he was feeling is the same thing that what I've been feeling for the last several months, and I understand. And that's me being honest and open and sharing deep parts of myself with the audience, because I know what it's like to feel hopeless. And I know what it's like to kind of not want to be here anymore. I shouldn't say kind of no, I know what it's like to not want to be here anymore. And, and so it kind of just shook me in this way, because this is somebody who was going through whatever he was going through to want to take his life and no longer be here. So um, shout out to my friend and, you know, rest in peace, Gary, Gary Bates, like you will be missed. And I wanted to talk about how this timeline of events really, really has an effect on what everybody is going through to the point where we are where we are. For example, if in January of this year, we were already hearing things about this virus. Now, us as a family, me, you know, you and I, Kenny, we're already dealing with a huge loss. Right. And, you know, that's something that I'm still dealing with to this day where I really didn't even process some of the pain that I was feeling until two weeks ago. And it's been very, very hard for me, like, that just emotionally thinking about that loss and kind of dealing with the reality of it on a daily basis. And a few weeks later, I had to bury a, another uncle. And so it was kind of like this, like, you know, already pattern of grief of losing older people in our family. And then it started getting kind of concerning that, hey, people are freaking out that there's this virus, there's this thing running around and the public is saying, the, the public officials are saying, oh, it's not going to leave China. And then it did. And they're like, there's nothing, you don't need to worry about anything. And me going through my own little scientific background, I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know, this whole little thing with masks, well, we, if you don't have this thing, then you, you know, wearing a mask doesn't, wearing a mask doesn't protect you. It, it only protects other people. So if you have it, wear a mask. If you don't have it, then you don't wear a mask, like type thing. That was the logic because that's logical. When you are in the scientific community, if you're in the medical community, you already know that. And that's why you had people like Fauci and, and others who were speaking like, saying in the beginning, no, you know, you only need to wear a mask if you have the virus. Right. Not realizing that they didn't know who had the virus at the time because they did not realize that this was a 15 day um, uh, virus that like could literally be in your body for 15 days, pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic, and you could be spreading it without having any idea. Whereas most things like you incubate and then you spread. This was not one of those things. This is like, boom, you're infected, you can spread. And they didn't realize that in the beginning. So here you have, you know, wrong information just because we didn't know. And you're, and then March comes. March came and everything started shutting down. It was like, the virus has taken over our entire country. Thousands of people have gotten sick and are dying. And then it just got scary because if you remember on a cast, the cast that we did earlier this year, we were like, people stop going crazy at the store, you know, calm down, just stay inside, just stay calm. And even though we were right to say that, it just kept getting worse. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it kept getting worse and people were, were getting more fearful and didn't know what to do. People are like, oh, I can't go to work. Am I going to be able to get money? Am I going to be able to get paid? People were panicking, but they were panicking inside. And, and then restrictions started coming where it was like, if you're, you can't leave, like people were going on lockdown in April and it was like, wait, they're saying that everybody needs to be home by like 5 PM. And you know, we're on lockdown until Monday school started closing and parents started accepting their kids back into their arms like crap we thought we didn't have you guys until june and and it started getting more like with more people dying it started becoming closer to home like that was when i started realizing wait wait i know somebody who's sick you said the same thing you know right and one of my sister's friends got it and passed away and and so it just, it, it all became more and more real. 
And so not just from us and our own personal, like think about just you and me having to deal with the, the, the emotions that we're feeling. And the timeline now is April. Think of the entire United States, everybody else, the entire world, everybody else who is feeling these things. I've got family across an ocean and talking to them being like, are you coming home? Like, are you going to come back here and then stay here so we can keep an eye on you? Like, are you going to stay there? Then the United States releases information saying, by the way, all United States citizens, if you are in other countries and you are on visitor visas, you have until this day to return back to the U.S. Otherwise, you can't leave because they did that. My parents got that information. They can't leave. They actually right. can't, you know? And so that became scary because that's like, I can't even, I can't go there. I cannot go there, cannot get on a plane and travel there, and they can't come here. So I can't see my parents. I can't touch them. I can't see them. I can't drive by. And other people are dealing with the same thing. And they're dealing with the fact that their family members are in the hospital and they can't see them and they can't speak to them. They're only able to see them on FaceTime. So the virus then gets so out of control. So many people are falling ill. Mode of transmission is being changed in the public. It's like, oh, they thought the mode of transmission was topical, you know, just by touching things. And they're like, oh, no, it's more respiratory droplets. People are out of their minds. They're feeling a certain way. In the meantime, again, people are still losing their jobs. And since they don't have their jobs, they're like, well, how do we pay rent? And then finally, these moratoriums go out and where landlords are being told, hey, please don't kick out your people. The mayors are writing. The governors of states are writing. They're releasing things saying, hey, please don't do this. If there's a federal back loan on your building, then you cannot be evicted. But you know what? There are a lot of people who weren't in, in apartments or homes that were federally backed mortgages. They were other things. And it's like, oh crap, I'm at the, the mercy of so-and-so. I may get evicted during Corona. Like, even if you didn't get evicted, the fear was still there. People were living under several layers of trauma by this point. Crazy virus, killing lots of people, killing people I know. I'm scared I might get it too and infect my family. Oh, and by the way, I can't work. I can barely leave my house. I can barely do any activities just to get away from either my family or just go outside, see my friends. I might be an AA and I can't go to meetings. Or, um, you know, I might be um, a teacher of special ed kids and I can't see them and that's making me feel anxious. So many things, so many layers upon layers that were making people feel a certain way that was just because of quarantine. Now, then you have to think of like, well, what impact did quarantine have on your mental health, but then what factors negatively compounded your medical health? Because while we were in quarantine, while all of those things were happening, let's fast forward, we're going through May, the weather is getting warmer, people are yearning to go out. You know, they're seeing the sunlight and they can't even be out there. And then we keep seeing things on TV, which were racial disparities and racial injustices. So imagine black people being stuck in quarantine, not being able to work, and mind you, black and brown communities were hit harder with corona than anyone else right so black people are the ones who are going to who are still going to work black people were filling these necessary positions we're not even going to talk about medical community but just the regular stuff the grocery stores the bus drivers the train operators these were all these were jobs that were majority held by black people who were getting sick because of this and now we're also being we're seeing this on TV that multiple black people are getting killed by cops for no effing reason. And like, just think about, we are, we're already so tense and struggled and feeling certain things because we are under quarantine and all of these things that quarantine is bringing to us. But now we're watching racial injustices. It just got to the point where people just felt like there was, there's nothing. We're hopeless. I mean, and that's, that was after, you know, you know, seeing us get trying to get out and trying to run, jog or whatever, and being hunted down by, you know, racist, vi uh, you know, vigilantes. Yeah. Um, and then those two people go free for however, I think it was like a month before yeah. charges were, were drawn up. And like, you know, this this type of stuff is, I guess, for us, unfortunately, is, is normal uh, in, the, in right. how people can do things to us and, and not face any 
uh, repercussions. And then, you know, for everyone to eventually speak out about it. And then it goes through this whole circle of, you know, protesting. And then, you know, they're not liking the way we protest and they, they inflict violence upon us. And then there's rioting and all this other stuff. And it's like, it's, it's gotten to the point where it's, it's, uh, it's just a normal thing. Yeah. So that's, that weighs, that weighs heavy. But then it's also like seeing people do things that are, stuff that we would we would kind of like um we would mention to our friends like you know this is something that ha- has happened these are things that happen people not believing us and then we see it it's recorded how someone can you know like a white woman can try to use her tears to get someone either locked up or killed mm-hmm. um and it, in one sense it's like you know vindication like oh like see i told you this type of stuff happens but on the other side it's like that person feel co- felt comfortable doing it while mm-hmm. being recorded for a reason the person who mm-hmm. killed you know or the police who kill people uh doing it on camera feel comfortable doing it for a reason um mm-hmm. you know and there was just stuff being brought to light over left and right and left and right and then outside of that so that was you know and then it was like global you know protests but yeah. in, even in the midst of that it was news coming out about abuse and uh sexual assault and mm-hmm. the gaming community, uh, abuse in the filming, uh, film community, um, mm-hmm. you know, just, just all this drama and craziness and things that were happening behind closed doors are coming to light right? because people right. are speaking out about it and they, other people are brave or, you know, like, because they see someone doing it, they're like, well, I can share my story now, but yeah. in the midst of that, it's like, this is more and more and more. And yeah, it's, it's. It's tough. And then we hear about our celebrities who are, you know, I remember we were talking off air about celebrities who were, you know, maybe gone, you know, because they they needed to stay away from people. They were social distancing, but they wanted to go out. And so they went out on the lake and something happened. Unfortunate. I'm not sure exactly sure what happened, but they get tipped over. Mm -hmm. The boat's tipped over or maybe they fall out or maybe they just, they get, you know, there's a, a strong current or whatever. And the parent fights to get the kid back onto the boat and then they pass yeah. they, they unfortunately pass away that's happened multiple times now uh with, yeah. with black celebrities and it's like i remember you brought that the the notion that would this have happened if it wasn't right um, you know quarantine and not so much that they would never go on the lake but the fact that they felt like they might have had to go to the lake like yeah. this was their only outlet and so if there might have been you know something that would have you know gave them pause before they're like, you know what? No, I'm just going to go because I need to get out or I need to do whatever. Um, I feel like with Maya Rivera, that was, I mean, I, I don't know her and I don't really know her thing, but it's true. It's like, if we're quarantined like this, but you live in an area where you're like, you know what? Let me take my child out on a boat. You ha- really do have to think about that. Be like, if we were in this situation, would this have been a thing? Because maybe if this wasn't a Corona situation, It wouldn't have just been her and her son on the boat. Right. Maybe it would have been her and a friend, like another adult, you know, because a pontoon is a powered boat. You, you know, you drive it. So it's like, maybe there could be another person. Maybe you would have had another person involved because there wasn't a risk of coronavirus. Um, You know, or maybe if it, if it ended up just being you two, because that's what you wanted, maybe there would have been more people on the lake that day if it wasn't a coronavirus situation where people were hunkered down. And so I just feel like they're like coronavirus, these multiple layers kind of feed into what we're, what we are seeing. And I don't, I don't mean to speculate, but it just seems like a plausible reasoning. Yeah. It's, it's tough. And, and, and then, you know, so like you're hearing these, it's like bad news, you know, left and right. And so you're trying to, I know for parents, that can make things difficult because, uh, so to share something personal. So like, for instance, homeschooling, um, I couldn't teach as much as I wanted to, uh, like I said, the end of 2019 was rough. And then 2020 has been crazy and mentally it was really difficult to get up every day and go and sit down and teach, um, Mm -hmm. three different, you know, kids at three different ages. And at one point, 
you know, we, we, we had to call a break. We was like, you know, we just have to, we got to stop because mm-hmm. they're burnt out. We're burnt out. We realized that we didn't have, we didn't have a break for so long because as, as something happened, immediately it happened. And we, we kind of went into a support mode or whatever the case may be. And then from there, we jumped right back into our normal work schedule, uh, teaching schedules and all that good stuff uh, to try to get back into some type of normalcy. And that, that was, that was the wrong move. And, you know, the frustration and tempers are high because, you know, one person is, you know, someone's grieving and you're trying to teach math and yeah. difficult. And so like uh, fast forward today, um, you know, we, the state of Virginia was saying that, or said that you didn't have to, to test, uh, usually with homeschooling, you have to have an end of the year test. And you give that to the superintendent of your district or whatever, and they mm-hmm. tell you like, "Hey, you're doing a good job teaching. You you can teach them again next year." And you know, they that's the, kind of them moving to the next grade. And mm-hmm. we did that with you know the oldest. The other two don't have to right now. And looking at the scores um, in certain categories, like uh, she scored higher than her grade. Like like right. she's in third grade, she scored like above fourth grade level. Um, and most of it was like reading, um, base, you know, the, the normal math and then, um, you know, uh, I forget the categories, but it was a ton. And the last category though is mass computation. And that's, uh, where you do basically problems, uh, adding, subtracting, multiplication, division. You just do a series of problems. It's not word problems. It's just how fast can you finish these? And that particular section she didn't do too well. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't it wasn't meeting where it needed to be. And granted, we didn't have to declare anything because, like I said, because of Corona, um, you don't have to. Um, if this was something, if this was a year where we did, we would have to retest that particular portion uh, and and kind of move forward. But so in a sense, that's like okay, we we don't have to do that. But what happened was, or the way I felt was that because everything else was done so well. Um, even though we didn't get to finish the curriculum, it showed me that the skill was there. The intelligence level was there. Um, you know, we will, you know, toss aside the fact whether or not she's a good test taker, but the idea mm-hmm. that if she got the material, she could pass the test. And the fact uh-huh. that we had to stop meant that she didn't have all of the tools that she needed to pass the final part. And that that kind of messed me up. I'm, I'm in a better place than I was before in the sense that... Mm-hmm. I know that it's a two-way street or, you know, like I, I'm not by myself. Like my, I can teach as, as well as I can, but she has to take the test. I'm not taking the test for her. And so yeah. it's not a hundred percent reflective of me, but at the same time, the fact that I couldn't finish kind of weighed over my head because it's like, if I would have just been able to get through, she would have been fine. And uh, that makes it more difficult to kind of get, you know, get back in there. Um, yeah. because it wasn't necessarily just me being lazy or, you know, what it was like, it was a lot of stuff and there's, you know, yeah. um, you know, and, and obviously I'm not going to go into everything, but it was a lot. And so to keep that mindset the entire yeah. time or the entire school year of that, you know, we're going to go, 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 go. Um, and not noticing like, and it was at a certain point I wasn't sleeping uh, there was, I, I was having anxiety based nightmares on different mm-hmm. subjects from, you know, like just dealing with racist people to someone getting sick to the people who had passed away, seeming like they're still alive, like all yeah. of these things. And so I'm not, I don't want to go to sleep. So I would stay awake. And then I have work to do and I have school to do. Like I have, I have teaching to do. So it's like all of that piled on to the point of like, I don't want to say having a nervous breakdown, but definitely yeah. absolutely not wanting to get out of bed, not wanting to do any sort of work, nothing constructive. And in some cases, not want to eat. Like it was, it was extremely difficult. And, and thankfully I'm blessed to have a supporting wife, um, friends yeah. who I can talk to, um, the, the, you know, I was blessed to, to be able to have a, uh, a, a therapist I could see before this all went down. And so the tools mm-hmm. that, that she was able to give me helped uh, because there's, you know, a part of my issues is the fact that I weigh what I do uh, against my worth. 
in that right. if, if I couldn't teach or I couldn't do what I, you know, if I couldn't work or I couldn't do something, then what good am I as a parent? What good am I as a husband? What good am I as a friend? Right. And that is extremely destructive to just it's sit. very destructive and it's not yeah. something that you need to do in fact anytime you ever feel like you're not good enough or you're not doing right just watch an episode of 90 day fiance you deserve father of the year 17 times over watch 90 day fiance and see what kind of fathers are on that show <laughs> just do it fathers husbands you will realize that everything that you do is like Willy Wonka chocolate factory gold. Like every, like here, literally you are golden ticket guy <laughs> because what you do is amazing. It really, really is. What you do for your family is amazing. And so, and I understand the anxiety and I understand measuring yourself, uh, you know, your worth is, is calculated to your job or the, or the job you do that what you're able to accomplish. Cause you know, I feel like that every day, shoot, literally I'm worth nothing. Like I accomplish nothing on a daily basis. And especially before working in a pharmacy, I was accomplishing like record amounts of not sleep in a night. Yeah. And that was really all it was good for. And then like, I'm about to get an award for putting the wrong medicine in the wrong bottle. So <laughs> I'm, I'm literally worthless. I do nothing. The only thing that actually measures my worth is the fact that my dog is still alive. She is still kicking. She is going to turn nine, inshallah. Like, <laughs> she will make it to nine years. That's how I know. I'm like, shoot, at least my dog is alive. Stop. <laughs> Look, I'm, hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Because if, if I did not have a dog, then I would literally think that I was zero. On the level of zero to hero. I'm sub zero. Well, you can't. And, <laughs> you can't. You... I have a dog. She's mangy, but you know she's alive and she's so cute. <laughs> she's looking at me right now. So there's, there's no, there's no, and and that's and that's where it's it's like I was saying, like being destructive, because our worth isn't wrapped up in the things that we do, mm -hmm. um, and you know, and we can go from all over the place, you know, in terms of like you know, being created in the image of God or having family mm -hmm. that love you or, you know, just your mind, like being able to talk to you, you know, weekly is therapeutic in of itself. The, right. the fact that I get, you know, I'm excited about it. I, I'm excited about the topics that we talk about. I'm excited that I can express certain things and mm -hmm. I can kind of be me as well because with this and granted, there's a, there's a part of me that's like, and you know, for people who aren't black, there's this 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 term called coding where you kind of switch or change how you mm -hmm. talk your mannerisms and all the other stuff because you want you don't want certain negative uh connotations mm -hmm. or you don't want to not get hired um yeah but at the same time i don't talk you know i i i have extensive vocabulary that ranges from you know normal basic english to a whole ton of slang and mm -hmm. there are times where i'm like you know what i'm in this certain environment that i can't s say things the way i would like to say it so i kind of have to be and i don't mean like not being tactful i, I love being tactful but i mean in the sense that i would really want to respond this way and i can't right. but no. on this podcast this is something that i made and this is why i kind of distance it a little bit from ufg is because i'm going to be the most of me that i can possibly be Right. Um, while talking. And so this allows me to do so. This allows yeah. me to, to be more of myself, um, as, as much as possible. And so this is a highlight. And so then I get to bounce off someone who not only did I care about that, ha that shares the same interests and some, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times the same viewpoint that right. even though we grew up in different places and our, our family dynamics are different, we are able to vibe in a way that I can't necessarily do with other people. Um, right. As, you know, aside from my wife and, you know, a few others, there's, there's, this is not the same. Right. And so yeah. that is therapeutic. Even if we're not yeah. talking about the issues that are happening, which we, we, you know, we often do, um, just to be able to talk about board games for like an hour, like it's, <laughs> it's freaking cool. 
Like, where else can you do that? Like, you can, yeah, we talked about how much we like the tick. Like, the I don't. The tick of all people. Fam, that, you know, that's a highlight. Like, or, or to the point where, like, we talk about a show and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go buy that show. I want to watch these episodes. I, some of the stuff that you talked about last week, like the anime that you were watching, I put them mm-hmm. in my queue. I haven't watched them yet, but I'm going to. <laughs> like, it's. Which one did I talk about? You, you you mentioned the the, the one about uh, Japan sinking on Netflix. Oh yeah, man, that really stayed with me for a few days. Yes, I'm I'm going to check that out. So like it's there's a plus. So that's what you've been doing. Yeah. Like I don't I don't know and, and it's not if you, it's something that you weren't aware of. I'm gonna let, I'm letting you know now that on air off the air I enjoy talking with you which is one of the reasons why I want to make the podcast like exactly this is 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 entertaining for myself um forget I'm glad listeners I can be therapeutic for you cuz facts <laughs> forget, <laughs> forget forget listeners like this this is helpful it's helpful to be able to have a, an outlet that right. is deemed safe um and so that's our advice for people, basically. We're just telling you that you should start a podcast. Just like I'm, that. I'm not saying all that. I, well, well, I will yeah, say you should you should definitely talk with people. You should definitely yeah. talk with people who you trust, and you should also seek help if there if there's something that you know those people aren't giving you the things that you need. Because there's a lot of, um, at least for me, there's a lot of. I feel like there's a lot of empty platitudes and cliched sayings that don't yeah. really they don't offer any sustenance right now yeah. and whereas you know usually it would be like something you can kind of shrug off or like yeah I, I get it yep god is good cool that 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 doesn't work for me right now um mm-hmm. i need more and so if if it's if it's something that you need then don't be afraid to seek that um and there's plenty of people um that I shoot, I can help you if you DM or PM me or hit us up on on YouTube that we can get mm-hmm. you in contact with that can help you. Um, exactly. I, a ton of my friends have gone through therapy and have come out on the other side better. Uh, it's not this big because especially for Black people, it's like this big, horrible. Oh, you might be weak. Stop it. It's fine. Yeah. Everyone should take some form of therapy at some point in their life. I personally think. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that doesn't even have to be from a professional, but in this case, I would, I would see, definitely seek out a professional, even if you don't think you have any type of issue. Um, and there's people that were willing to work with you based on your income situation, based on your, you know, insurance and all that good stuff. There's ways to get help. Um, and outside of talking to people, there's outlets, you know, I mean, Netflix, you know, we kind of joke about like watching everything on Netflix and needing a sequel. Um, there's a lot of content that could feed you in ways that you don't know can kind of get your mind off of things or kind of like you know uh get you to think about things in a different light there's also um outside of watching or playing a video game or whatever it is that you need to do there's also space like even though that you have your kids with you your spouses with you and you, you feel like you just have to be you're, you're around each other all the time take the time to kind of like you know what i'm gonna go over here for like an hour and I'm gonna read, I'm gonna listen to music, I'm gonna do something, but I just kind of need you to not be here with me. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah, same thing yeah. for you know your wife, your kids even. Um, mm-hmm. And and oh, this is something I want to point out too. I actually asked my kids how they were doing. We we were at dinner and I was like, "How are you doing?" And you know they they talked about how. They miss being able to go to church. They miss being able to see certain people, to hang out with certain people. And so mm-hmm. one thing, a couple of things that we've been doing, like for my oldest, she has pen pals and she'll, she's been writing back and forth between multiple people. Um, and that's been going, going well. Uh, I know her and her cousin have been sharing Pokemon cards that way. They'll write it, write each other letters and then they'll, they'll send a, a card with it in the mail. I love it. I know. Um, and then we'll, we also had like, uh, for the, for her birthday, they all got on Minecraft. Uh, she was on the switch. Uh, my other two daughters were on the Xbox and their cousins were all on the switch, um, in different areas and they all were playing mm-hmm. together. And that, that was pretty awesome. Um, there's also zoom things that, that, that are helpful in terms of like, just talking to people. Like I, I get that you can't go see them, but you can talk like we, me and Tess are talking yeah. like, or Tess and I, I should say, you could talk to, <laughs> you, 
Yeah, I, I could talk good. I could talk good. Um, yeah. You could <laughs> you could talk to people um, and just hang out in a, in, a, in a, you know, or you can do Parsec and put up like, um, and for you don't know, it's screen sharing software. You can mm-hmm. jump on the Parsec, put on a film and watch the movie together, even though you're apart. Um, there's things that you can do. You know, uh, you need more sun, get out, get some vitamin D. That yeah. definitely helps you in terms of your mental state. Um, yeah, it does. And, Walking early in the morning, too, like or very early while the dew is still out. Like, right. Because then you're less likely to get pollen and stuff, especially if you're like me and you have allergies. But breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth in the very early morning um, crisp air that is the best. And I'm saying that because like, I have been through it. Like there, I have been really, really ill before. And I remember that one of the only things that would help me, and this was also when I was younger and I couldn't afford therapy and I didn't have access to anything because I was still young and I was a college kid and didn't have anything at my fingertips. I had nothing at my disposal except a school counselor. And that's not, you know, the counselor <laughs> they're not a yeah. therapist their job is to help you pick the right classes um i remember that one of my saving graces was waking up as early as possible and getting out while the air was still crisp before it would get hot and breathing in through my nose and out through my mouth and taking a walk just it's it's your best bet in you you know with the whole wearing a mask things i know some people are still having a problem with it and i know we like we can be hard on people when it comes to that because obviously masks are the best way to stop viral transfer through that happens through your mouth if you are outside and the wind is blowing just it's, it's a simple breeze and you're not around people and you haven't seen people for the last 5 minutes it's okay to take your mask off it is it's actually okay Literally, I listened to Dr. Fauci and he, he wrote this, he said he goes for walks. He walks like, I don't know how many miles a day. And he's like, when nobody's around, he takes his mask off. That man is 80 and he don't have coronavirus. So I think it's okay to accept what he just said right. in that, that respect. If there's no one around and there is a good amount of air circulating and you are outside, you can take it off. If there are people around, put it back on. Right. On. <laughs> right. And while you are in the midst of other people and there is a 12 foot radius, think that viral droplets are in the area, okay? So until those people are gone and the wind is blown, keep the mask on. Mask on, mask off. Mask on, mask off. It's there not hard. Go. That's predicate. <laughs> uh yeah those the walks are good um and, and and listen to music uh has been you know definitely helpful listen to things that are uh because you know what music kind of put you in in certain moods and and mm-hmm. you know a certain vibe and so you know having yeah. those at your disposal that you can kind of go to um mm-hmm. and for the people who are you know because i unfortunately you know there we we both know people who have committed suicide um, right. even before this, this whole thing popped off, um, yeah. for those of you who might be feeling like that's, that's an option. Um, we just want to share the national suicide prevention, uh, lifeline for you. Um, that is 1-800-273-8255. That is 1-800-273-8255. And they're available 24 hours a day. Um, and yeah, they'll, they'll definitely be able to help you if, if those other things that we talk about don't help, uh, Mm -hmm. because we want you, we want you to be around. Right. It's an, we care. I mean, because we've experienced what we're, we're going through it too. And I know that when you are as hopeless as can be to the point where you're questioning your own existence on this planet, or you're feeling like you would be better off if you weren't here or other people would be better off when you weren't here. Misery doesn't love company at that point. You know, misery loves company is a great phrase when you're just, when you're very upset or it's different than feeling like you want to leave, like you, you want out. That's different. It's not about like really feeling kind of like 
oh, this other person is going through it too. To be honest, sometimes when, when you find out somebody else is going through something really, really like feeling like they want to leave the world too, you're kind of like, okay, let's do it together. That, and I'm, and I'm not saying that in a joking way. I'm saying it because I know it's true. And so what, what I'm, what I'm putting out there is that there are options there are other, there's just, there are other ways to kind of come out, to come back from that, to get back to that point where, where things are a little bit more bearable and just what we're going through right now, just like, I mean, people are at their wits end just for the simple fact that they don't have any money. Like people are struggling and like, you know, everything is, everything sucks and everything hurts and everything sucks and everything's on fire. And by the way, everything hurts. So when you're looking on your left and you have no money, you're looking on your right, you realize that the one thing you wanted to do as an adult was to support yourself. Like you didn't get married and you didn't get, have any kids. All you, you wanted to do as an adult was to support yourself. And now you can't even do that because you can't work and you're basically quarantined. And you can, if you can find a job, you're putting yourself at risk and it's not worth the money. It, or it's not a lot of money. It's not enough money to support you. And you're just basically at your wit's end. So when you're feeling like that, and you just, you kind of don't know what else to do. Like, I hear you. We hear you. We see you. And that hotline is there for you. There are other people out here who would do anything to pull you off of that ledge. So if you know anybody in that situation, I kind of feel like, the best thing to do, maybe it's something that I regret that I haven't done enough, but the best thing to do is just send a message to people. And it's just like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Because I guarantee you right now, nobody is great. Nobody is great, but we don't know how close anyone really is to the edge because we're all feeling it. All of us are in different varying areas of suck. Right. Okay. You know, everybody is in a, it is in a position of suck. And so if I'm feeling a certain type of way and it's kind of down, I know that I don't really want my negative energy to really affect anyone else. So maybe I don't reach out to other people. And I know months ago I had said, Hey, check in on your friends. They're not okay. I know I had put that on my Facebook before I got rid of it. <laughs> so like a couple months ago, <laughs> but, I, and I really meant it, you know, people need to check in on their friends because they're literally not okay. And, and, and I'm saying that because as a person myself, who's not okay, there are people, my friends, people that I know, and obviously that I have known who are no longer here that were closer to that edge. And I didn't reach out and say, Hey, are you okay? And I missed the sign. And so I do feel like in this time in which we are and knowing good and well that the pain that everybody is experiencing now is is multi-layered trauma that's been happening for several months. It's ongoing. It's like somebody is continually beating your stomach with a bat. And it's almost like this is just psychological trauma. The best thing is to kind of just reach out to people and just say, hey, how are you? That's kind of it. Yeah. And that's, you know, and... <laughs> This is not a, uh, you know, obviously the idea isn't necessarily to end on a downer, but the idea is that, you know, to share how things are going so people know that they're not by themselves. So yeah. people know that everyone else is dealing and, you know, there's, there's levels obviously based on who you have around, you know, uh, your financial situation, things of that nature, but there are avenues regardless of what level you're on that can be beneficial. Yeah. And so we were just sharing a couple of things that we've noticed that, uh, you know, because we don't, we don't have as, as, as long as we might want in, in terms of this cast, yeah. but we are, it's, it's something that we think about and it's something that we've, we have to do ourselves to, to kind of get over. And so, you know, uh, beyond, you know, um, taking walks, music, prayer, you know, talking to people, the hotline, therapy. Find um, a dog. You know, <laughs> I'm not a dog person, so I don't know. But the <laughs> same, find a tether. I said, no, seriously, seriously, and and I mean this, I mean this in all seriousness. 
a tether. People need a tether. And that it doesn't work all the time. And, and there's been extreme situations, you know, like with celebrities who are under the microscope, you know, we there were just some celebrities who really just did some stuff recently. I mean, and I was very shocked seeing what I saw with the celebrities in the black community. I'm like, wow, who, you know, are basically on suicide list. And that really got me. But a te- you need a tether. Sometimes when you are tethered to this planet, some things kind of keep you grounded. And so some, sometimes pets are, are like, pets are a good tether. <laughs> so buy a dog. Yeah. Dogs are kind of expensive though. You might want to start with a hamster or I know, agree. a parrot. Uh, a parrot. Hey, Cause you could talk to them. Yes. And they talk back. Yes. So, um, yeah, a ton of things. Uh, if you have any hobbies, um, uh, I've, been going like I've, I've actually graduated uh from college with a bachelor's of fine arts that said i've been doing classes for uh digital art um yes. i've been taking some some painterly classes through that to uh not only kind of like jump start you know getting back into doing art on a regular basis um but then also um just trying different techniques that i haven't you know i wasn't able to do you know, with, you know, with getting older, getting married, having kids, you kind of, you, you, you like, you know, you work, work, work. And even though I was doing, I was doing writing stuff, obviously, but then I also did art. Like I sold a lot of art. Um, I kind of stopped to kind of do more writing because I felt mm. like it was, it was paying more often. Um, but I've always, I always like to draw. I'm always have been an illustrator. And so being able to get back into that has kind of helped me with like a, a boost, like a personal boost. It's like yeah. seeing the, the work that I've done. And it's crazy because within starting these classes, I've already had people commission me for work. So it's like, it's, yeah, like there's different ways. There's all these different classes and things that are, um, that were expensive, different programs that were expensive. A lot of them are cheaper right now because of, of what's happening in the world. And yeah. you never know, you might find something that you like or something that you always wanted to try out. And yeah. you have more time to do so. Um, and you can kind of develop those hobbies right now. And yeah. that could be a boost, you know, especially if you're doing it in a like-minded community where, you know, you show off your work and, and, and show how you've grown and whatever craft or skill that you have. And the other people can kind of cheer you on. Like that's, that's pretty, that's pretty solid. Like outside of watching the verses on Instagram, I've been sharing some artwork there and people have liked it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, it's, there's, there's, there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, yeah. With that note though, uh, we want to kind of move, move forward a bit in the sense that we're going to be around. Yeah. We're going to have more podcasts. We want you to be around as well. Mm-hmm. And not just to listen, although that is a plus, but <laughs> There's, there's hope is what I'm trying to get at. There's hope yeah. in tomorrow. The coronavirus is not going to be here always. Um, hopefully, uh, racist people won't be here always. Um, yeah, you know, the, the Karens are going to, you know, improve. You know, they're not going to always seek out the manager as soon as things goes left. You know what I mean? Um, if they bring potato salad with raisins, that's a problem. I don't think that's... I don't, can you fix that? I don't know if you can fix that. Like... I don't taste buds all jacked up i mean anyways so yeah like there's gonna be there's, things are gonna be improved things are gonna get better things are gonna get hopefully we're not gonna get back to normal i think we're gonna be in a better place when this is all done hopefully um and you know i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to you know what what comes next if you will but in the meantime um you know we're here you know, yeah. we're here for you. And I'm sure you have family that's there for you as well. Um, and if you, you know, if you want to be here with us, then yeah, stick around. We have a lot stick of cool around. stuff to talk about. A lot of things yeah. to talk about, a lot of things to share um, in, in, in our journey and things that we're doing and, uh, you know, it, it, to make conversation, to make things a little bit lighter for you. Um so again, thanks for sticking with us throughout this episode. Um, I'm going to actually post the the hotline number uh, in the description along with our other 
you know, normal information. And again, let us know what you think. Uh, if this was beneficial, you know, give us a thumbs up. Uh, maybe you might want to share it. That's cool. If not, no worries. Um, again, this wasn't necessarily like a, a self-promoting uh, podcast. This was more or less therapy for us as well as a means of helping others with yeah. the, you know, the small platform that we have. And so, you know, feel free to subscribe if you want and, and share if you thought whatever we said was helpful. And uh, yeah, that's that's all I got. Look forward to seeing you guys. Well, here. Let, anyway, look forward for you guys <laughs> listening to us next week. I don't know. I, I lost all of my language right there. But yeah, so see you guys next week. Uh, or maybe just see you guys in a few days because today's actually Sunday. Right. <laughs> Things happen. Things happen. Um, you guys, we're, we're just great having you. Um, you know, be kind. Wear a mask. Black Lives Matter. And peace out. We will see you in a few days. Bye-bye.